everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Glow, and here I talk about things regarding BPD and autism. So I just wanted to make this quick video because I know I've not posted in a couple months. Um, basically, I just wanted to make a quick video because for a, what, like a couple years now, I feel like I've got my BPD like really under control and I felt like I was managing things and my emotions weren't so crazy and then the bits that were crazy was because of my autism. Um, it was mainly in regards to my food being cooked the wrong way or my wife touching my stuff and like moving it somewhere else so it wasn't where I expected it to be and then it throws off my whole plan and everything like that. So I felt like a lot of my issues were down to the autism. We established in my other video that pretty much BPD is just being neurodivergent and traumatized. So I guess that was me saying I'm kind of over the trauma response part of it. And I think I've come to realize over maybe the last couple months, particularly this last couple weeks, that I am not where I thought I was. And the thing is, when you realize like, you know, you thought you had moved past things and then things happen and then you regress back to reacting in a certain way and thinking certain things. Um, it makes you feel like you're back at square one and you have to start all over again. And for me anyway, it makes me feel like I'm an awful person. I don't deserve to be alive. I cause nothing but pain to people so what's the point in hanging around um and then I also feel like people bring me a lot of pain so what's the point in hanging around and then something happens and then it causes me to spiral and then next thing I know I'm kicking off I mean my kickoffs aren't anything like they used to be you know the BPD rage especially when you were like undiagnosed and untreated and it's like chaos to the world it's not like that so much anymore it's more like I feel like it's a personal attack when it's not and and then I just get myself into these states where I end up just isolating myself because I think the main reason I thought I was over everything is because I felt like you know I caused a lot of pain to people people have caused a lot of pain to me it doesn't matter in what situation friendships working relationships um acquaintances like it doesn't matter like I just I couldn't be bothered with people because I cause pain they cause me pain when I'm caused pain I want to cause pain back so I isolate myself completely my agoraphobia got so freaking bad to the point where I would only leave my flat I would only leave a couple times a week and one of those times was to attend my mental illness appointments and the other time would maybe to get money or food or weed because before I was prescribed it legally, I relied on getting it from a dealer and they're not known for taking fucking PayPal or whatever, you know what I mean? So I never left my flat unless I had to. I didn't associate with people like, like I'd isolate myself so I didn't have to interact with anyone. And the fact that I wasn't interacting with anyone meant that I was able to regulate my emotions because I had no one there pissing me off. Like the only people that I had in my life pissing me off was my family, but that's like a whole other thing. Um, and then I ended up meeting my wife and she is the person I aspire to be. She's also diagnosed BPD and is awaiting her autism diagnosis. But the second I met her, I was like, you're fucking autistic, trust me. Um, <laughs> Um, and she is just like me, but so much better, so much better. She's, she's able to work. She's kind, compassionate. She thinks in the gray area. She's, she's fucking amazing. And, and I just don't think I, I would be where I am now without her. And that's the thing that it always comes back to is it took, it took, a bunch of people to break you and it's going to take a bunch of people to fix you and um it just sucks when you're not good at <laughs> talking to people bonding with people because i have 
So this is how much energy an average person has. This is how much I have. And it just goes so quickly and people need consistency. I'm not a consistent person. Like I'm not, like I try so hard. Like at the minute I've been getting up like 7 a.m. in the morning to try and get myself into that routine. And it's so annoying because they're like, autistic people love routine. Well, my routine is no routine and that's fucking irritating because every time I try to get out of it, it's like, what the hell? I'm no, I know I'm not alone in how I'm feeling, but then I'm falling back into my isolation because my wife works away most of the week with this new bloody job she has. And that upsets me because I just love being with her, but it's whatever, she's got to work, you know? And then it's like, okay, we'll make some friends. Like I downloaded Bumble BFF and there was like this one girl I was talking to who's waiting on a reply from me, but I don't have the energy to reply. And then I feel awful. And it's like, people don't want a friend that just dips in and out do they like I mean I've got two proper in real life besties and and we don't really talk you know it's not they're not the relationships I'd love to have I'd love for us to be like ladies who lunch and and friends who who do things I don't know um but they work, they live miles away, they have their own lives. And then I feel like it's just me, broken, unemployed, alone, miserable. And the thing is, I'm not like miserable entirely. Like the the thing is, is like, I want to do these risky behaviors. I want to self-destruct. I want to tear everything apart. <laughs> I'm a wife now and I actually am so madly in love with my wife that I I can't leave her. Like, she is the only reason I have right now to stay alive. I have no other reason. I have, you know, not really any family because it's always that pipeline in it of the girl who's like, oh my God, my dad traumatised me. I have the best mom in the world only to find out years down the line that actually maybe, maybe she's not the best mom in the world. And apparently that's my fault, but what can you do? Apparently the relationship with my dad was my fault. What can you do? You know, I don't know. It's just sucks. Like when the people who created you and are meant to be there for you were like, fuck you, bitch. It's like hard in it. But I didn't even mind so much because I have my wife, but I'm just, I feel like shit. I feel alone. Hey God. Anyway, I just I just wanted to come on here and ramble because as much as I feel like it's just like me talking to a camera, it gets it off my chest and um and it might help some people, you know, to know you're not alone. There's other people who feel this way. Like I feel like I'm right now I'm twenty six and I feel like my life is wasting away. Um, I've seen a lot of people in their 30s say they felt the same way in their 20s and life starts at 30. So four more years and we'll find out. I don't know. You know, four years ago, I never imagined I'd be where I'm at now. I mean, to be honest, four years ago, what, how, what? So look, 2019, I actually thought I was going to be something and go somewhere. Now I'm a housewife who's fucking miserable and not because I'm a housewife or because of my relationship or anything like that, just because of how my brain is and how I respond to things. And I've been to therapy, I've done therapy. I've been in therapy for literally half my life, 13 years, and it helped as much as it could. But now it's my turn to start making moves it's just you're not alone <laughs> at all um and and we're in this together and as much as i can't be there for you as like a friend um i hope you just know that if you're out here suffering i'm suffering too so yeah see you on the next one